Hi, I'm that bookish bomb, and this is my April. What month are we in? April wrap up. So the first book that I finished finished because I didn't start it in April, uh, but I did finish in April. It was Sight by Neil Shusterman, and uh, this was absolutely amazing. This was a dystopian that I have been wanting for a long time now and it definitely delivered. With all its twists and turns and plot twists, I mean it was like ugh, amazing. I cannot wait to finish this series. So Scythe follows um, two Scythe interns, which is Scythe is someone who gleans people to kind of keep population under control because death no longer happens normally anymore. People don't just die from natural causes or there's no murder, like death is just not a thing unless you get gleaned by a scythe. So it follows two scythe interns, Rowan and Citra, which are amazing characters. I love them. So Scythe Fair Day actually takes on Citra and Rowan um, to be his interns and they are basically training to become a scythe, but only one will be chosen to be a scythe. And <clears throat> while they're training, they go to a, I forget what it's called, but basically where the scythes meet up and <clears throat> they go through a process where they are tested and then approved as scythes. And so they end up going to one of these for their first te uh, test and having two scythe apprentices is just not a thing so once people find out that scythe faraday has two scythe apprentices somebody won't name any names <laughs> jerk he says that they should glean the other one whoever becomes the scythe should glean the other one instead of scythe faraday's original plan which was one becomes a scythe the other one goes back to her normal life and this is like it takes a whole year to train so it's being removed from your life for an entire year and then having to return which i feel like uh, it's punishment enough <laughs> but that happens and so it was just a ugh. And a lot of things happen and it's crazy. I also read The Tea Dragon Society which is a graphic novel and it's beautiful. Okay, It is a beautiful, beautiful graphic novel so it's got that going for it and but it's also just a really cute story that follows a blacksmith's um, daughter and apprentice. Her name is Greta and she meets these tea dragon caretakers, uh, Ezekiel and Eric and Minette is a girl that lives with them who suffers from memory loss and she's just becomes immersed in this tea dragon um, caretaking hobby and she absolutely loves it and loves the dragons and this is something that people don't even care about anymore and so for her to be interested in that is super special to Ezekiel and Eric and her and Minette become really good friends and it's just like a beautiful bond of a friendship that's starting to begin and the next novel I think the next graphic novel I think it's gonna be super cute and amazing and it's only going to get better from here. I also read Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Alcott and this was my classic for the month and I'm surprised I finished it but not really because I listen to the audiobook for a huge majority of this so I'm just not good at reading classics but this follows four sisters that are um, living with their mom uh, for the most part and their dad is away at war and it just follows their relationships with each other and kind of their love lives and it wasn't my favorite classic but it was still really good. I gave it four stars. Scythe so got five stars and the Tea Dragon Society got five stars too. Sorry, I always forget to do that. I also read Pride by Ibby Zaboy which is a remix of Pride and Prejudice and I thought this was super cute. It was like a complete YA fluffy love contemporary twist on Pride and Prejudice. It is really interesting because it does have um, the main character who is black and Dominican if I remember correctly and then the Darcy boy is 
black and it's just like a complete twist on it but no, I really enjoyed it. I forgot what I said about it in my vlog. There are a few things that I didn't really care for but for the most part this was a pretty cute fluffy contemporary so if you're into that it's a pretty good read. I think I gave it three stars because the main character kind of got on my nerves. What was her name? Zuri. Zuri Benitez. It was still a really good book though. I also read The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord and Emery Lord is just amazing and I need to read more of her. This is my second book that I've read by her and I did give it four stars. So The Names They Gave Us follows a 17 year old girl named Lucy whose mother's cancer returns and this is something that she has already survived, her family's already gone through this, and they had moved on thinking life's great now. She thought that nightmare was over, but now that her mom's cancer is back, she's basically reliving this nightmare and is questioning her faith and all the choices that she's making in her life. Also, there are things happening that is just not in her control, like her boyfriend pauses her and her mother wants her to go to a camp for troubled teens and youth for troubled youth and this is something that is completely like out of her comfort zone she's used to going to the camp that her parents work at every summer and it's a christian based camp because her dad is a pastor and so to have her life completely turned upside down is just not <laughs> something that she's happy with right now plus she plus since her mom's cancer came back she really just wanted to spend the summer with her mom because she has no idea what's going to happen if her mom is going to survive it and this could be her last chance to spend time with her so she was really upset when her mom requested that of her but of course she wanted to abide her mother's wishes so she goes and works at the youth camp she ends up making amazing friends and these friendships are unlike anything she's ever experienced. She had been close to people that she was on the swim team with and went to church with but these friendships were had such a deeper connection which I really love about Emery Lord's writing because when I read the start of Me and You like I loved the friendship between the four girls in that book. It was like oh, amazing and beautiful and something that I wish I always had and I just never had. So I do love reading Emery Lord's writing because her books because she builds these beautiful friendships and these bonds that are just oh my heart. I love it. She definitely tugged on my heartstrings during this book and I absolutely loved it. It was a great ride. It was I thought the pacing was great until I got toward the to the end of the book where a lot of secrets come out which we knew that she was going to find out some family secrets at the youth camp and so we don't find out those secrets until really at the end of the book and so it kind of felt rushed at the end like I wish I would have had more time to process these family secrets and I can't even imagine how the main character felt being able to process those secrets uh, but I'm sure Emery did this on purpose to make our hearts feel something which she did. I definitely cried quite a bit so honestly it was, it was such a good book and four stars it was really amazing. I also read Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston which I feel like some people will really love because it's so similar to Cinder or hate because it's so similar to Cinder. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It's a retelling of Anastasia and so we have Anna and Rob who are on a mission, really a life-threatening mission, to find coordinates to a lost ship because this lost ship could have answers to how Anna can save her metal which her robot is a best friend that she's known the entire time uh, after her memory loss and so he really means a lot to her and he is like glitching and she's afraid to lose him so he wants she wants to go to the ship to save him to find the answers on how to save him. Rob wants to go to the ship because his father disappeared and 
he does not want to believe that he's dead, so he wants to go to the ship to find out what happened to his father. And he is hoping that he is still alive and he's able to find him. Because his mom is awful. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there are other characters in this book that are really great, like Jax, who's the pilot, and I, I love him. I think he's like probably my favorite because he reminds me so much of uh, Thorn from Cress. So like I said, this is really similar similar to Cinder in the Lunar Chronicles. Um, like I said, some people might like it because of that, because they love Cinder so much, or people might love Cinder so much that it's like, no, don't even attempt to write something similar to it. But like I said, I really enjoyed it and I love the Lunar Chronicles. Maybe that's why I like it, because I love it so much and I really just wanted more of it, but still a really great read. I thought the journey was super intense and this book was like pretty fast paced. I felt like there was never a dull moment in it and I don't know, I would I would recommend it if you like the Lunar Chronicles because it's, I don't know, a retelling outer space and so I don't know, I really liked it. And you do get perspectives from uh, Anna, her um, metal best friend die and you get Rob's perspective and you get Jax's perspective and so I felt like that was really great. I really like books where you get multiple perspectives so each chapter is a different perspective and those chapters uh, pages were pretty short which made it easy for me to like read. I don't and I don't love books with really long chapters because then it takes me longer to get to a stopping point. And when I don't get to a stopping point because, hello, kids, uh, it's, uh, it's just hard. But anyways, four stars, really loved it. Last but certainly not least, I reread one of my all-time favorite books. I read this book when I was like 16 or 17 and I was in high school but I absolutely love reading adult books and this is an adult book by Christopher Moore called A Dirty Job. The main character is Charlie Asher who is this complete neurotic paranoid guy. He he loses his wife shortly after she gives birth to their daughter Sophie and so that's where it begins where he becomes deaf. And he's not necessarily deaf, he doesn't kill people or bring people or cause people's deaths, but at first he does think that. Really he is just collecting soul vessels and reselling them through his thrift shop that he works at, well he owns. And there are other death merchants, which is what one character Minty Fresh calls them, and like I said, they're just passing souls on to other people. Um, it's amazing. And I absolutely love this book and I highly recommend it to anyone who loves to laugh because this book is hilarious and although I didn't give it five stars like I originally did 12 years ago, it's still four stars. My reading taste has obviously changed in the past 12 years but still an amazing book and a favorite. That was my April wrap up. Thanks for watching. Bye.